Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Netta. She is absolutely incredible. Truly one of a kind. We have a lot of life, a lot of music to discuss. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, she won Eurovision. Sister's a big deal. And, uh, but by the way, reminder, this interview and all of our interviews happen first live on a brand new app called Amp. We're on it. Hang out with us every day for three hours. We play commercial free music. We interview your favorites. And it's totally free to be a part of it. So link in the description below. Download it. Use the access code. And while you're down there, leave your honest feedback in the comment section. And hit like on our video. And subscribe. Please. Anyway, let's get started. Netta, here we go. Hello, beautiful human. I'm so excited because right now, hanging out with us in the studio, we welcome Netta. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> wow, listen to that reaction. Hey. Yo, people are excited to, uh, to have you here. I am excited to be here. Your, your energy is very unique, it, it, but your music is unique too. Uh, uh, how do you describe the art that you make? Well, what, that's it? <laughs> well, it's like you take, like the, the way uh, you would describe the Powerpuff Girls, like <laughs> sugar and spice and everything nice, and a lot more sugar. <laughs> added to that and um so, and there there you have it there is you know when you say sugar i think chick flicks and breadsticks instantly <laughs> for some reason uh it's one of my favorite lyrics of yours uh, do, do you have a favorite lyric of yours um, my favorite lyric um blah, 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 blah. wow i'm surprised with all this uh i have uh i have now a song called dumb Mm. Uh, and I sing. I I have a phrase that I like that I wrote. I I got a liquid brain leaks out my ear when you say my name. I got a GAD and a PhD when you speak. It flows down a drain. <laughs> I, I I it it describes the 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 certain feeling kind of like I feel right now. Like but you're asking me questions and my brain is absolutely liquefying, <laughs> and I'm trying to gather up like the the. Whatever's left of it. <laughs> what has been going put on? Put it in a cup and like, okay, yeah, that's my thought. <laughs> well, I thank you for uh, giving us what's left of your brain. But, but you're very welcome. You've been busy. I'm assuming. I mean, you're here in the states. You've been doing a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of shows. Yes. Are you on a full blown tour? I know you were just in New York. It's City. not a full blown tour. 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 I'm. I'm doing like. Um, I had like two very successful shows in. I'm, I'm I'm so happy to say that we're successful. That we're insane. I wasn't expecting it to be this way. I had like two very good shows in New York, and I'm about to have them. Uh, about about to have two uh, shows in LA. I hope I hope they go as well. Um, and you know, I'm starting slowly, like really carefully dipping my toe in the U.S. waters. <laughs> uh, I I I just you know I wanna. I, I want to see uh, uh, what what happens because you know I I st four years ago I started making pop. Yeah. Before that I was making very indie blues music and pop is like a dirty word for for musicians. I was like around the, the, the jazz circle and 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 when I came out of the <laughs> as a pop enthusiast I gave up. A certain circle of people yeah like like a, a certain crowd like I gave uh, and like I gave I gave up on like I was dreaming to perform in like festivals and like I, I had like very small dreams and then I changed it changed completely how does it change is it you getting on this one competition show that you end up getting voted off of but you <laughs> get saved by judges and then that turns into Eurovision yes it so, did. Well, quite before that, I was doing a lot of blues and a lot of indie and a lot of actually avant-garde music. But would you say that that avant-garde still exists in the art you make today? But like, how do you define pop music over jazz and what you were making before? Is it song structure? Is it the instruments you choose to use? It is. It is how wide it is. When you make when so you mainstream. do when you do avant-garde, you do. What, what is what is saying when you do avant-garde? Like when when I did what I did and I worked with the musicians that I that I did, it it only it was appealing to a certain kind of people, 
Um, and it could, it, it, it was so good and so much fun to make, but it didn't have a lot of people that could understand it mm. and, and that could listen to it. And when you do pop, it's like you're giving up your defense mechanism and you're, and, and you're very vulnerable. You're opening yourself up. And when you do something that is so wide, uh, then you don't know what to expect from a crowd. Mm. When I was a little girl, I was bullied a lot. And I was always, I was always told, you are not popular. You, you are not a part of, you are not pop. <laughs> so uh, so I, I, f I, I found my little niche and I stuck to it. And when I found a way to love myself, despite what other people told me I should feel, um, then you accidentally inspire other people. And then I didn't know how to take kids like me like i i didn't know how to how to how to take that in when when like little boys and girls started being my fans and and this is why i am saying when when you when you make something that that is wide when you make something uh giving up your your uh your defense walls then uh then something amazing happens. Yeah, people get a chance to understand you and get to know you and see themselves in you. And then people like you feel connected to you and then somebody who didn't have a community now has one. Mm -hmm. And yours happens to be global. It happens to be... An, a, a, you Accidentally. Won, I mean, you won the biggest song competition <laughs> in the world. That happened. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. It's, it, four years ago now. But that happened. When I was making indie, when I was a, an indie musician, I was struggling with money. And struggling with rent, my mother was a, a a bundle of joy, and she was really was really helpful. But but she, but she got into her tough love moment and said, "Neta, listen, this is all very nice. The the stuff that you're doing in the museum in front of like thirty people, <laughs> you were busking. I, I really I'm I'm loving that. Uh, but um, maybe it's it's time for you to to go back home. And I uh, this is like um. I don't have a driver's license. <laughs> so going back home means <laughs> not being a musician anymore. Like, because you're not a, a part of, like, the scene happening, like, in, in the main city, which is Tel Aviv. Um, so I needed to do something extreme in order to, like, get into this do or die moment. Okay, I can, I can give up on music at any point. But I, but to get back to music would be so much harder. So I might just, you know, give it a, give it a go. Uh, and I decided to go to this reality TV show. And for, for me to stay protected in this place, because um, when you, when you go to, when you go to a television show, um, they, the the personnel that works there usually works in patterns. Okay, so she's the 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 fat girl who's yeah, they're very sensitive. So yes, so okay, she, so she's gonna be the she's gonna be the Adele. Okay, this 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 goes this what's gonna happen with this girl? And and it was four years ago. We we're talking about the before Lizzo era. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing right. existed like that, and um, and I knew what I wanted. So I had this looping device. And I knew how to beatbox before because my brother was a drummer, um, and and he was doing that a lot, so he taught me. So and he's the person who brought that device into your life. He he taught me how to beatbox, but the device was me watching Kimbra on on a YouTube dive and telling myself, okay, if I buy this, then then it then I will rock. <laughs> Is that one of the? I mean, must be one of the most powerful investments you ever make in your life. Probably. Probably. And but but you sing to also make it through the IDF. Yeah, that happened. You sang to make it through yes. the Israeli Defense yes, Force, yes, which yes. because everybody who lives in Israel needs to serve. Mm -hmm. But were you born in Nigeria? <laughs> You're jumping. I want to know. <laughs> to a, a lot of what um, I, we'll I was. I was born in Nigeria from uh, when I was uh, when I was an infant until the age of six or seven. Sorry. Um, and then you moved. 
to Israel. And then we moved back to Israel. When I was in Nigeria, it was actually very, very interesting. I grew up in a school and in an environment where a lot of, uh, a lot of international kids were there. So I was in a classroom with a boy from Japan and a girl from Mexico. And that's awesome. Like all these cultures and, and, and colors and, and tastes, they were all like, you know, all, everyone brought their lunchbox. Imagine like, <laughs> imagine like how, how amazing was that? Because everybody came with their language and, and their culture and their culture. And we had two Nigerian kindergarten takers and, um, one of them I remember very vividly. Her name was Mrs. Baja. And uh, and there were actually no... I didn't realize there were physical differences between people because we were so different from each other. And I was a social leader, and I was very, very popular. And I was... Uh, and uh, and everybody expressed themselves. And, the, 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 and we all celebrated each... Each and everyone's culture. The teachers were so good. It's such an important thing to be a like good ed- to to have good education. When I came back to Israel, uh, like it was very sudden. It was like my mother, my mother had a fight with with uh, with someone in our neighborhood, and we flew. Like she she like had it, <laughs> and we and we flew uh, to Israel, and then uh, it was first grade, and then I realized with a f- f- 40 white kids in a classroom that you are the fat you and a broad kid with the accent who is also very very sensitive and and that's a big weakness so um when when kids label you it sticks so i for years i b- really believed i really believed everything that i was told and uh, does it hurt when producers of this reality show are trying to label you the same way kids labeled you in the first grade? Sure, but I was already. I would. I, I you was, already wore the badge. Ah, uh? were you wearing that badge already, or did you wash it at a certain? Uh, the, I I didn't. I don't mind people uh, labeling me as as long as I get to do my thing. Uh, I, I when I don't believe these labels then it don't matter. But when you're making avant-garde jazz music, does that label, do, are you even reminded of that label that like society gave you? Because it is so, you know. Do you get I it? love that label. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, th- I thought it would, it, it made me a part of something. You know, all that I long for is to be a part of something always. But when I realized I do not belong <laughs> in, 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 those, in those genres, it was heartbreaking, but I I said like I, I didn't I, I could make a living out of any any of it if it if it doesn't happen in my own way if it doesn't happen like if it, if it's not labeled neta if it's not me I can't I I I was try, I was auditioning for so many different acts I. I tried to seek backup for so many singers. I tried to do jingles. I tried to uh, I, I tried to sing in weddings. The, the the brides didn't like how much attention I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting. Um, I was I, I I literally tried anything and I was too much for. And I was not right for anyone. And and it was heartbreaking because all I wanted to do was make a living as as a musician. All I wanted to do was be normal, to be a part of something. But the reality is, like, who you are is what makes other people feel a part of something. Which is great. Your quest was to fit into somebody else's box when you're the person who should dictate what the box is. <sighs> Does success like that not prove any of that to you? And right now I'm very happy in, in where I am. And where and with whom I do music, uh, I I have my my own musical family now that I work with. I have my partner Rav Shalom, and I have my Nadav. We we together we we conquer um, we we conquer the obstacles and we do stuff our own special way. I have like a, a, a posse of people believing in me, and I am so lucky, really. Um, I we we're just you know 
we're just doing our thing. We're not, uh, um, we don't like uh, the labels. You said, yeah, you said happy, but you didn't say you're successful. Do you not feel like you're successful? <laughs> what is successful? Well, I mean, that, well, how do you see success? How do you measure it? When I say, like, I had two successful shows, uh, the energy that I had, that I got from from people, that the 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 crowd that I saw there, how how much they knew the lyrics, how much it touches them. I I went to meet them afterwards. What they told me is where I want to be in my career. But you don't feel like you're there. I feel. Like, what is there? What is like, what has made it? What is successful? I, it's, it's a journey. It's, um, it's a whole, you know, I, I, I don't ever want to say I made it because, because sure. what, what is it? I, the, 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 I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to seize, I don't want to stop being excited over, over like the next thing. Like I do. I do take a moment to be proud of myself. I do take moments to be compassionate about uh, myself uh, and forgive myself because I'm, I'm obviously too hard a lot. But um, how so? How are you? In what ways do you judge yourself? Do you judge the music you make? Of course. This is why it takes so long to release it. Really? <laughs> yeah. How long did it take you to craft a song like Toy? I, Toy wasn't actually mine. Toy oh. was... Uh... Is that Jack White's? <laughs> is that real? <laughs> or is it bullshit? Well, you tell me. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, you tell me. You listen to the song. <laughs> and you tell me I have nothing to do with it. Um, although I, I do think that Toy had sounds like nothing. Really? No, there's nothing like it. So Toy sounds like nothing. So, so to to say that, no, I, really, I don't, I don't think that there's a connection. But, but when I listen to it after, and uh, I, I don't know. It sounds like nothing. Toy, what what Toy did in 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 the world and its achievements and and how it changed people's lives. I don't I don't like this to be the association of it. It's too big. It's not when when we talk about toy this is not the stuff that we need to talk about. Well, how about CEO? That's also Jack White. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> no. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> no. No lawsuits in this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no lawsuits. Well, C- CEO is incredibly empowering. Thank you. I did it when I needed a pep talk. I really did. At what stage? Wait, uh, it, it was post-COVID, mid-COVID, rewrote it. And um, and I I really needed something um, to remind me how powerful I was. I felt absolutely powerless. I was doing videos. I was doing a, a web series called Netta's Office. Mm-hmm. And... And it was so much fun making it. Uh, you did it was, covers. It, yes, it was me. Um, alongside covers, I was improvising. I was, I was toying with my my devices and with music and with musical ideas that my fans gave me, using her their comments as lyrics and and as ideas for 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 stuff. And it was like an open channel for me and them. Uh, I loved it. That's special. I loved it, but it also felt uh, like I wasn't seeing anyone. I wasn't meeting anyone. I'm not happening. I am not. I I felt I I didn't feel as inspired. It was very very difficult. So, CEO uh, is is a, was a way to to bring myself back in the game and i love that and i love it and and one of the ways uh for for me to like say okay i need to wake up i need a challenge is for me to like say okay i am a going i'm going to dance 
in this video like I never did and I never never ever allowed myself. I'm not I'm not the sporty girl as you you may you can may tell or may not. And I I I'm I really like Netflix and I really like my couch. <laughs> and and I um I do enjoy writing music but like and I do and and I and I do have like a uh, my kind of groove but never never got in a studio and like and got instructions you should yeah. do this and this and this and you should like research the the way that your body does this and that and so I flew all the way to LA to work with a choreographer I liked who her, her name is Eden Shaptai and she was Uh, very very hard on me I chose her because of that <laughs> that she can she can she can torture me and feel fine to the shelf <laughs> uh, and I loved every minute what do you learn about yourself that I'm I stronger I'm stronger than I think and I can do anything no it, it, I wrote this song for me to feel this way I, I made the the grounds uh, for me to feel like empowered also the whole procedure of making this song and making this video empowered me it was all for for me to get back to myself and uh, I I loved every second of it and and to think about that that it was shot in Ukraine like 60 or 70 Ukrainian people dancers and 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 actors and not to speak of all the camera crew and and the production they all gave so much of themselves i uh, it's not the only video i shot there i shot also basa sababa there as well which is one of your biggest hits one of my biggest wow and i i love ukraine so much and for everything happening right now it it It, it breaks my heart for all my friends writing uh, that that's the situation there it's it's unbelievable music is genuinely global I mean it is a language that is totally universal is that accurate to say like I guess so when you choose no it's not a choice if it's global it's global I mean even the success of your records they're heard a world over I make my music in English but I don't Not all your records are in English though. Um, a, a lot of them a lot of them I'm, I'm it's kind of like I'm also known where I come from as like as an as an English but but is it English <laughs> yeah. it's it's I I am I am an international artist working from a creative uh, uh, a creative uh, space in Israel. I don't think that uh, to try to be something else is is um, is beneficial I know I know a lot of you know to 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 have success in the US is like a dream where I come from uh, because when you make it here you make it everywhere right true and a lot of people that I know they they we, we grow up on this culture. I grew up on on Aretha Franklin and Erica Badu and uh, and Ray Charles and 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 Christina Aguilera and Beyonce and Fergie. I grew up on these people. I grew up listening to their songs. I grew up mimicking their sound. What a lot of people that I know are are trying to do is to 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 get closer to this sound. And um, what I figured out, I've, I've tried to do this for, for a very long time. What I've learned is, is that uh, you have to do, you have to bring you. You have to bring you. A lot of people are, are ashamed of their accents and they're ashamed from the, uh, the musical background. But I, I, I love my language and I love... I love my musical uh, heartbeat. When you're being yourself, there's no way people can duplicate you. Or you I, tr- you I work so hard for, for, 
for my music to to sound mine. I need it to be fresh. I need it to be mine. But it's and really I, an extension of who you are. I mean, you needed CEO before the world needed it. Yes. Is it wild that the same feeling you got from that song, other people get from that song? It is. It is wild. Um, it is wild. I, I, I think I am also make, making uh, a, a lot of breakthroughs as like a songwriter. Uh, I had a big song written for me, which is Toy, um, because I was in a situation when I needed to go to Eurovision because I won a contest that I didn't think I'm going to win. Um, and and from that moment when your first song is a big hit and you're a songwriter, but it's not yours, it's a pickle. That's hard. It's a pickle. And, and when I did Basa Sababa, I, th- when I wrote it, I wrote it from a very, very, very dark place. <laughs> like I, th- I, 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 I wrote uh, a very dark memory of, of me being fifteen, and and secretly dating another fifteen-year-old, which told me that he's ashamed to date me because, um, because his mother hates fat people. And he's ashamed of being seen with me in school and people feeling sorry for him. And uh, from that moment until I was 25, I was ashamed of dating people publicly. Just to not, just to not um, confront the, the, the feeling of, of, of rejection, of, of people, of people's looks. So I wrote, stop, call your mama. Now tell her I'm a rhino. People have been calling me a rhino all my life because I'm clumsy and aggressive when I'm insulted. Uh, So I decided to reclaim the rhino as a pink, fabulous, bedazzled thing. And absolutely nobody got it. (laughs) It's for you. Absolutely nobody got it. Everybody liked the beat and the pink rhino. And and that was the thing. <laughs> but, but does that song allow you to want to date again or allow you that mental freedom to like go of course. out? course. Like it has to be so freeing and uh. Yeah. No, I I I did it I did it from a very therapeutical place. The song I, was I, living I, in you for 10 years. Yes. I I needed it. I needed this song. But what I'm saying is nobody understood. Nobody understood. That's hard. And I I uh I needed um I'm working still still am. I don't think that I'm a uh, I'm a magnificent songwriter, not even a good one. I am trying to um to make my way as a uh, as as a lyricist and 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 a and a good pop writer, uh, and then we did, then we did Cuckoo, which great is great record, which is one of like uh, one of my songs when I did a breakthrough uh, uh, in in my writing process. It's more of a ballad. It is more of a ballad, and it is very brave. Yes, uh, in beautiful. in order of like. Uh, I had a relationship at the time where where everybody thought that my first relationship ever, my first boyfriend. Um, and and when everybody thought I should be happy, like, look at it. Look, look at you. You're successful, as you say. They think you're lucky. You say, oh, she's lucky she's a star. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and... And everybody, everybody thought I, I must be through the roof, and, and I thought I was going crazy. Like, I was really, like, is that, is that it? Is that it? This is it. This is love. This is, this is what it feels like. I'm not happy. Six flicks and breadsticks. No, we don't have to feel a thing. I know. I like when you're holding my hand, but I don't feel nothing. I was in that relationship. It's not a post breakup song. It was it. You wrote it while in the middle of it. Well, of course. Wow. 
So it's you having this realization that you're in a relationship that you shouldn't be in because yes. you're numb to its existence. And like we we were a year in for oh. him to hear like uh, like listen, I don't know if I love you. Do you play the song for him? Yeah, and we he stayed he stayed he, he stayed he stayed, he stayed a year later. Whoa! And after that, the COVID COVID broke us up. <laughs> but but uh, you knew it was wrong the whole time. Huh? Why do you keep trying? Why do you stay even after you play him that song? I think me and him, um, still, we are uh, we are fighters. We f- we fought for that. Um, even though you knew it wasn't worth fighting for. I didn't know. I I know nothing. Like I mean, I, I have a feeling, but I don't know. I know nothing. Isn't that your gut? Mm. If it goes from your gut, my gut to- tells me something, and I go after it. It doesn't mean I'm right. I'm wrong 50% of the time. I'm not, if not more. But when's the last time which you put Which is some- very frustrating. But but when's the last time you put something in song that ended up not being accurate? Well, that's a... I, I don't know what to say about that because when you write it in a song, then it's it becomes the truth. Hello? It becomes the truth. You just be- hit me with the order of operations on this relationship and the song <laughs> came first. It becomes reality. It becomes reality. Maybe the song broke us up. Mm. By the way, I, <laughs> a gonna, year later, I'm going to take this time to say, listen to Goody Bag. That is uh, the body of work that that song is on. Ye- and all the other ones, there's going to be a link in the description below for you to listen to it. What's the importance of 978? <laughs> it's, it's random and important. Okay. Um, <laughs> How do those two work together? <laughs> How can you be both random and important? Okay. So what happened is... When I was um, after you after Eurovision, um, b- b- fans completely ruined my number, my phone number. <laughs> uh, that was, you know, that was stupidly. It was there on Facebook from 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 the, the time I was sixteen, and I was looking for 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 uh, for a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it was like. Um, uh, I needed to change my number, and I was like a an, a VIP at that point. And a person from the phone company came up to my house, and he, he had a, like a tie and like a, a briefcase. And I was like, "Wow, <laughs> yeah!" <laughs> and then he said, "Okay, I'm gonna give you a number." Um, it goes like this. Oh five four nine seven eight nine seven eight nine, oh. and and I was like, wait what? <laughs> <laughs> and and he said okay nine seven. It's not. I, I picked up my phone and I called my producer Rav Shalom and I said, listen nine seven eight 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 nine and you know like in in a couple of like, like fun uh, like, tones, and um and we f- became obsessed with this number. And um, we started, um, and, and I didn't know why. I kept, I, I kept, kept singing it and singing it, and um, and then we like did the research, and we find like that nine seven eight is an angel number that signifies power and control, and it means that you have been neglecting your. Um, your duties as a leader and saying that number and if that number, something very complicated with the tarot practice. And the the more I got into it, uh, the more it felt, it felt like it had something in it. Um, and we put it in a track <laughs> and we sang something really stupid with it. <laughs> Give me one more piece of chocolate. I don't get no, no. And I do some time I might regret. I'm not getting no, no. And uh, we did something so, r- really stupid. And then um, uh, Afshalom does what he does best. Um, he sleeps. And then he wakes up and tells me, Neta, <laughs> listen, this is the, the complete the rubbish. <laughs> you have to come back to the studio and record something anthemic. <laughs> something wide, something big, something people can. And then we had this huge fight uh, about me blaming the world and and me understanding after this that I, I need to blame myself. 
because I'm the CEO. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, CEO. And then I, oh, wait, I'm a motherfucking CEO. I'm going to get, no, no. I, it's, and, and, then, and then it came to life. And then he came, um, like, it was big enough. Yeah. Uh, we did this uh, beautiful record with uh, with uh, Boaz van der Beek, who is like uh, Diplo's right hand, which is really cool. He came to Israel uh, we, um, during COVID, and uh, and we had like a wonderful, uh, a do a wonderful time doing this and them um, together, and a lot of other songs that you may not, he, you may or may not hear. The other uh, cute thing about CEO is. Nights of when my my mother called me the minute I wrote it, and he's and she 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 helps me run things. <laughs> She's the only one I trust, and she asked, "Listen, okay, everybody's gonna ask questions if if your company's gonna name Neta, like what what's you what what do you want to name your company?" And I said, "Listen, nine seven eight nine seven eight nine." So I'm the CEO of a real company called nine seven eight nine seven eight nine. That's awesome. This is the, 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 um, like, but but she was like, she didn't get it at first, and but uh, she didn't get why do I want this? So she, it's not the actual numbers; it's letters spelling the numbers. So imagine me oh, wow. like asking for like uh, a bill for something. It's all written out. Can you write it for nine seven eight nine seven? But no, really, N I. <laughs> they need to write the entire thing. <laughs> hey. That's horrible. <laughs> but, I, but I like it. I don't mind every time. It's cool. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Were you actually a kindergarten teacher? Yes. It's so weird. Like the way you talked about your own kindergarten teacher, you talked about two of them. Like they changed your huh? life. Yeah. It was it was very briefly. It was for like two months. Uh but it was a very powerful two months, you know. I was in, in an anthrop I don't know if if it translates. Anthroposophy? I I don't know. It's a it's a type of education uh, educational method where it's it's kind of weird but it's really beautiful. Like it's it's it has like an organic approach. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Not COVID. <laughs> Um, <laughs> needed to be said. <laughs> um, so it's the, sorry. The, <laughs> the kindergarten teacher, they sing to the children. Oh, everything is very organic. You have to say thank you uh, for everything. Thank you for this earth that's giving you something like that's that. That's beautiful. Yeah, and like the dolls has no faces. What? Uh, because they don't want them, they don't want, they, they want to, to enthusiast their imagination, the, oh. the kids. And all of like the toys are organic and all the kindergarten teachers are whispering and they're all singing all of the time, which was kind of like a, um, kind of like a fairy world. I felt like a fairy. And when I came to the kindergarten for my first day, the 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 other kindergarten teachers started to teach me the songs and there was like two two and two and three year olds that you have to sing to every day and the first time i was singing they was like they they all stopped whatever they were doing and they were sitting and it was it was magic for me i had i i i was performing every day in front of like two and three year olds it That's was awesome. it was so cool I enjoyed myself so much doing that. Did you want to give to kids the same thing that was given to you? How do you fall into a job like that, even for two months? I love kids. I do. I love kids, and 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 I I I also liked waiting tables because it was also a performance. Oh, like, so. hi, my name is Neta. You are you. The soup is disgusting. <laughs> Don't take it. And I I. I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I was getting amazing tips and, and breaking every glass in, <laughs> in the restaurant. It was very clumsy. I basically like everything with people. I liked every job that I had that included me working with other people. And, and, and education was one of the greats 
Yeah, uh, there's nothing more personal. Nothing, also- nothing more. I, I was also like a vocal coach and nothing. I, I know nothing about vocal coaching, but I, 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 I know about people. I know about music and, and, and for me to, to share it with other people, basically this is all, that is all that I've been doing is to sit in the same room with other people and exposing them to something and sharing it with them, sharing the joy of, of, of how wonderful it is. How do you feel when you're on stage now? It's just like you, you got your loop machine. I feel like your music is meant for like a live audience. Yes. How, how do you feel when you're on stage performing? I feel that only now I've come to a place that I am happy with my performance. It was so difficult to to bring the looper into a place that that it can hold a space with one hundred not one hundred I'm sorry, I'm bad with numbers with a lot of people <laughs> with a ton of people. Only now I found the right group of people that I can feel comfortable with. And only now I found the sound, uh, me and my, my tech team, only now we found how we should, how, how this data meets speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, basically the looper, is, if, if I get really techy, then, then there's like a left and a right mm. out. And you record bass and you record drums and you record like other three vocal um, lines and it all comes out of like a, a left and right. <laughs> so it, it was very difficult for me to understand how am I, uh, what am I to do? At the first step, we used seven loopers on stage. Whoa. Just to split them. And it was, the, the amount of, of, of malfunctions was crazy. And and right now we have uh, we have cracked something which is really amazing that um, that some of the vocals uh, uh, like specific vocals come from me and specific vocals I record to a computer and a live band is supporting me. Yeah, you mesh all together. It is so cool to see. It is so cool to watch an experience. It's like, it's like I am supported. I was standing alone for so long, and now I have, I I, I have like admitted like to admit you need help is <laughs> is really it's a, it's a difficult thing, but I, I I have like the privilege of working like the the upcoming show in LA. I'm going to stand there with my my musical director of Shalom, who has been walking hand in hand with me and never performed with me, which is amazing. And I'm performing with him and Guy Moses, who is on uh, keyboards and everything, and Yoni Bloch, who is on uh, on drums. And literally, I couldn't have been uh, luckier. Uh, it's it works so good. It, it works so good. Finally, I've, 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 for the past four years, I've been finishing shows and getting off them crying, like understanding that that what I hear in my headphones is not what's coming out. It doesn't hold the arena, mm. and and now it's so good. That must be really it's hard. So good, it's so good now. Obviously, the feeling of getting it right and figuring it out and cracking the code. Mm-hmm. But like to get off stage and not be happy with the quality of product that you were able to give to the people who paid money or whatever to come mm-hmm. and see you gave time. Mm-hmm. It was devastating for me. I didn't know what ha- what is happening because I am I know how to I know how to perform. I I I had like a great great school for that. Also in the army where you, which you were referring. Yeah. Uh, performing on battleships is not <laughs> it's not a conventional thing with with uh, with, with no uh, with no microphones and also uh, I I was working as like a house singer in a very very uh, moldy bar um, uh, which had power breaks every night and I needed to hold a performance in front of like 200 250. Uh, 250 people 
uh, in a power break. And that was my favorite moment. I would like get on the drums, uh, sit on the drummer's back. And we were like, that was my, our favorite moment. And, and to come from a place where you can do that. And then I, I, I could plug whatever I'm doing in my looper ex- to, to, to a tech guy who can broadcast it on TV and the sound would be amazing. But when it meets a PA, yeah, it cuts. it's a toy. Uh, it's a toy. You're right. And, and uh, for, for so long, for so long, we were struggling and we cracked it now. So it's like, a. Uh, I'm excited to uh, see you in LA. You coming? Oh, I'm coming. Yes. I'll be there. Speaking of toy, toy was written for you, but where did the chicken noises come from? Were they written in there originally? Nah. <laughs> that, that's not Jack White. Nah. <laughs> that's Neta. Um, when I did uh, the reality show, I did a cover for Yano mm-hmm. uh, in, on my looper, and it starts like this. It starts like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, which is like me. And when uh, uh, Doron Madali, the writer of Toy, uh, together with Stav Vega, when he uh, when he listened to that, he said, oh my God, that's great. I'm going to take that and I'm going to enter that in the song for Netta to have her little thing. Wow. And he wrote, uh, bada bada boom, bada bada boom, bye, which is kama kamaru, kama kamaru, boy. And I said, okay, if, you, if, if, that's, if that's me, can I make it mine? And what I needed in this song was for it to be funny. It was way too serious. Um, it was too, too campaign-y. It was a campaign for like, um, for me, I, I, w- I felt like I was supposed to sing something that I'm forced to. And I needed humor. I needed humor in it. I needed for me, for it to feel like it's not real. I have jazz education. And uh, and whenever I needed to like uh, to to copy uh, a, a saxophone player, I did my own scat language. Really? Yeah. For example, like free buff, free doodle, dip, dig, 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 what? <laughs> so I was doing that, and then I was like, "Okay, if you if you did that, that can can I make it mine?" And then I said, "But and 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 immediately the 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 chicken wings the chicken wings came the dance <laughs> and 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 that was it. it. Immediately came in the song and became the thing. Is this another example of something that you had to do for you that ended up becoming something just so much bigger? I guess so. Yeah, because you needed to make it your own. I had to. I I was begging. I was begging them. Listen, it needs to feel mine. Can but please? Uh, I entered. Uh, I got Pikachu in there. Um, my favorite character ever. Is, there's also, I feel like there's like a, a text message alert in there that I hear every time. Is that well, accurate? Text message? It sounds like a ding that is like oh. right in the same. Smart phone. Yeah, uh, it is a smart that, that's, uh, that's them. They, they, listen, Doron Madali and Stav Vega are the hit makers of a lifetime. He, 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 they, they created a lot of the hits that are right now streamed in Israel. And it's very difficult to like for an artist to make the crossover for, 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 for the world. Do you feel like you're going to do it? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't... Have to, what is it? What is doing the... Um, didn't you say that it's already happening? <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's what, process, like, it listen, is. it's, 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 um, it's what, what means, what needs to happen needs to happen and will happen. You just got to be yourself. I, it, I, 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 you know, I am, uh, if it's not, if it's not happening, I, I won't be mad. <laughs> it, it's okay. Yeah. I can still go back to being a kindergarten teacher. I'll be great at that. I know that. <laughs> It's awesome, <laughs> and uh, you know it's about it's about making music. It's about it's about sharing it with other people. It's about it's about it's about giving energy and getting it back. It's about this. 
the minute I understood that I belonged to this profession was um, I I was singing in this reality show that we talked about and all of the judges uh, were giving me were giving me like the the finger. Uh, I don't know if the <laughs> is it the good finger. <laughs> it's like the 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 the, the naughty. The, oh, shame on you! But it's not the dirty finger. <laughs> okay, okay. It's so, the so like not, shame on your finger. Not f you, but shame. No, on you. yes. And I was devastated because I thought I, I brought it. I, I talked to the TV people and I said, "Listen, I I really want out. I I am I am experiencing something. I know it's mine. <laughs> I I am not feeling very happy with what I do." I'm not feeling very happy with how I am. I might be put out, and I went out, and I was, and I realized that that moment that I might be hurting myself. So I, I said like I, I am going through something, and then the TV was like, I, 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 I used to call them the TV devils, but, but what I found out that they're actually, the people. Everywhere we, when we look at media and when we look at, uh, we 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 see good and bad people. But there, I don't believe there's good and bad people. There's people. So anybody that, has the opportunity that, for either. So I, I I I I said, listen, I I want out, and they looked at me and they said, listen, go in the studio and create something. Like do something for the next show, and then come back and talk to us. And then I went in. And I did something, and I was so excited about it that I, uh, I forgot thinking about quitting. So creating gives me so much joy and and so much it it, you, it resets me every time. Every time that I think about like I I need to rechoose music, I get in the studio and then it's clear. Hey. <laughs> we sh- I should do this. That's a sign that you, this is what you you're meant to do. And again, doing something for you first, mm-hmm. then ends up working for everybody else. Exactly. What you're do you so think? So smart. Are CEO and Dump connected in any way, or did you just decide to release them at the same time? Well, they are because they end the same. For, way. Oh, my, what? They end the same way. They they are. First of all, they're made by the same uh, producer um, that did it with us. Uh, whose name is Boaz van der Witt. And they are connected because I feel like one of them is, which is CEO, is very, very, um, is supposed to to emphasize like this the control, and the other one is the loss of control, is uh is is when when I can't and and when there's a malfunction, uh, it's like it's embarrassing uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb as CEO's embarrassing uncle. <laughs> and you have a new single coming April fourteenth, yeah? April fourteenth, it is. Is it? Is that wrong? I don't know. Oh, am I wrong or right? April sixth. Oh my god, it's oh my god, it's this next week. I've lost all track of time. Wow, we're saying it for the first time. Then oh. April sixth, I have a song wow. coming out. April sixth. Sheesh. Does this start a whole new era for you, or? I think it does. It is. Um, we're starting the playground Politica era, and it's a whole album that I wrote, um, giving uh, a lot of a lot of um, how do you fa- uh, the the word in Hebrew is the gesh, giving a lot of uh, giving a spotlight. <laughs> a spotlight to the experiences I had as a child in in Nigeria. Uh, a lot of my music, because of its colorfulness and and craziness, might might seem childlike, but this is actually how how my childhood sounds like. My childhood in Nigeria. This song, actually. It's called I Love My Nails. Doing nails is, is an amazing metaphor for choosing you, for for doing for doing something for yourself. Mm. This year I experienced rejection. Uh, I loved a boy a lot. 
and he didn't love me back. Um, so I, I wrote this song, um, like I am saying there, you will never love me like I love you, but I don't care because I love money else, <laughs> which is stupid, but, but very deep for me. Again, me and my, <laughs> my stupid brain. But it, that nobody gets. Yeah, but, but everyone ends up getting. You say that nobody gets it, but like the, the truth is, like those who d- need. We to get we it, get sh- it. we will see. We will see if they get. But uh, th- the song is for me. It's magical. It took us about four years to get this idea down. Whoa! Three years ago, we wrote a song together with a lot of people in a room in LA. Uh, which was all about nails. Okay. Like, I like acrylics. I like my gels. I like the... I mean, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm feeling myself when I like my nails. <laughs> and for years, we t- we knew that the, the hook is so good. The, ah, 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 I love my nails. It was, like, something that is very strong. And, um, like, a, sh- a scream that, the, ah, 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 I love me. I love me. Anthemic. Really, like something so positive. And we tried to crack what what does it mean to me. And after I had like this heartbreak where I felt like absolutely nothing, I was like, I, I, I value myself a lot. I love me. I've gone through like a big, 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 big journey with with who I am and how I look and how I think and 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 loving it. And for a moment there, I lost it. And it felt like a big black hole. And this really picked me up when I went and, and did my nails and I went and did something for myself. And I, like, it's like a, it's a cute metaphor for that. I love it. Because I know a lot of people who are, when they're down, they do their nails. They do their nails. They do their hair. They go shop. They do their yes. thing. Yes. But it's things to make them feel better. Yes. And also, it's an appearance booster. And mm-hmm. when you change your appearance for the better, it does, it's, it's a mood it's booster. It's more than that. It's like it's a way to express yourself. Truth. It's a way uh, to uplift yourself. It's 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 a way to take care of you. It's a sign for you that you are okay. <laughs> like it. It's like um, I I can step out of my house. I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it's so deep for me. <laughs> it's so it's so deep for me. I met the other day a group of women that are called the Long Nail Goddesses. <laughs> they have a salon in Jersey, and they have the longest nails in the country. Of course, it's in New Jersey, mm-hmm. the greatest state in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 meet. Every month, <laughs> they gather, and they have, like, I, I hope people can see this. They have this long nails, <laughs> natural, and they all meet, and they share tips, and and, oh, and more than that, they are, they're a support group. They're a community for each other, and it was so emotional, this visit. I, 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 I have long nails. I looked like a biter. I, amongst them and they did like this initiation ceremony and they bedazzled the shit out of my nails and I felt so it felt so good <laughs> so good and and um they actually they 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 share what the nails are for them and and how it it brought them up through the, the their life's hardships and and it's actually very inspirational that this thing that you hold on to that that means that you take care of yourself like the small sign it it's like doing your bed in the morning it's like it's 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 this thing that keeps you majestic yeah it's the only thing actually it's the only thing that you see of yourself when you're not when you're not looking in the mirror your, it's, the, it's your it's your hands that's deep that is deep and i do my nails <laughs> you do your nails? I, yeah, I don't. I mean, somebody does them, but yeah, I do. do. I, keep, I keep them nice. Yeah, wait. I, I can't see. Can you like? I got some art. I'll show you later. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Yeah, I do. I, I do. Uh, I've done some crazy sets, and to be honest, like it makes me feel whole. I feel you. Yo, 
feel complete. Yo. I feel it. I'm so happy for you that you're doing your nails. Thank you so much. I love your nails, by the way. Thank you. You got gems and stuff dangling off of them. And you, you casually were doing ASMR into the mic, oh, not love, even knowing. I actually I actually entered um, the uh, the percussion that they do in the song, like the. Oh, oh wow. With your nails. Yes. So they you, actually. Your nails feature on the nails record? Of course. Duh. I'm sorry. But I have to say that somebody did it before me. Her name is, you might know or might know her. Her name is Dolly Parton. Oh, I heard of her. And she, you've heard? I think so. <laughs> you know her? Yeah. Um, she's, her so, she's so indie and avant garde. She, she's so indie. <laughs> <laughs> I've said her shoulders. So, um, um, so she uh, has that. I I didn't know that. Which was what song is it in? Nine to five. Oh, uh, which is one of the greatest songs of all time. Of all time. I mean, really. You hear the beginning. That's her nails. Uh huh. Wow. That's Dolly. So I'm doing the Dolly Parton in my song. Wow. <laughs> You're paying homage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, that's what it is now. <laughs> I love it. April sixth, that new that, that that record is dropping, and please, boom, you gotta listen to Goodie Bag. Go back, do your research, prepare yourself for the new era. We're gonna put a link in the description below. Final question, Daniel, what, what do you got on your agenda? Anything? Well, two things quickly. Do you plan on singing in Hebrew more in the future, or or no? Way, I never say never. Um, but right now, I don't know. Okay. I I think I I have this this big thing coming. And I am super excited about it. I try to stay focused. And the last thing is, how, how do you learn to beatbox? Because you're very good at that. And it's not always easy. Um, how do I learn to beatbox? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's a, it's my, my brother was a drummer. Yeah. He, he still is one of Israel's best um, drummers. And um, uh, I do a very lousy one. <laughs> I, it's, a, it's a very, no, it's not, it's not very good. It's um, I don't I don't I don't like my bass, but I do I I am a singer, so I I do uh, I uh, the humming. Uh, meanwhile, that I do it is cool. But do you hear drums and just think that you can do, you can imitate? No, I that? have like one or two beats that I can do. Oh, that's <laughs> oh let's okay, hear it. it. Let's hear one of them. Okay. <clears throat> It's not, it's not, it's not very good. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That was incredible. It's not very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll be here all week. <laughs> Do we love like beatbox? <laughs> That's your show now. No travel beatbox. <laughs> pedal's gone. Just you want to catch you beatbox. It could be a show. Wow. Uh, wow. No, wow, wow to that you. That was super cool. Yeah, you 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 scatting, you are so incredibly fascinating. And I thank you very much for giving us time and energy wow, today. Wow, thank you, Zach and Dan. And I, it was I, so great to speak with you. I really liked it. Well, please come back. You're good at what you do. Well, thank you. You should, you should consider doing a podcast. <laughs> we should take this seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we got something here. <laughs> please listen to uh, uh, a goodie bag. Link in the description below. It is more than worth your time. It is inc- unlike anything I've ever heard before. You are really, uh, I-, I think, definitely steering and pioneering a new version of pop. So keep wow. going. Thank you. It's really awesome. And uh, I appreciate you very much. Netta, everybody. Woo!